Hello sir. Can you explain Section 70 of Central Goods and Services Tax Act? Why not? Listen carefully. 1. The proper officer under this act shall have power to summon any person whose attendance he considers necessary either to give evidence or to produce a document or any other thing in any inquiry in the same manner as provided in the case of a civil court under the provisions of the Code of Civil Procedure, 1908. 2. Every such inquiry referred to in subsection 1 shall be deemed to be a judicial proceedings within the meaning of section 193 and section 228 of the Indian Penal Code. Sir, can you explain the same in common parlance? Why not? Summons are issued to inquire about evasion of tax or duty and contravention of statutory provisions. It does not specifically state that who is evader and against whom proceedings have to be initiated. It also does not mean that the notice is an evader. It cannot be assumed or presumed that summon means action against the person to whom it is issued. If one reads the language employed, then one can have a presumption without any doubt that authorities have only issued summons intending to inquire into alleged evasion of tax or duty. The power to issue summon and examine a person has a vital bearing in an inquiry under the CGST Act. 2017. The evidence so gathered will have a bearing on the quality of adjudication proceedings. Status of the person summoned is of no consequence. However, sufficient care should be taken to summon only such persons who would have first-hand knowledge of material relevant to the investigation being conducted. It must be ensured that the procedural safeguards are not violated. According to Section 70 of CGST Act, 2017, where any officer has reasons to believe that any person is required in attendance to give evidence and produce documents, he may authorize any officer to issue summons. Any proper officer, duly authorized by the competent authority shall have the power to summon any person whose attendance he considers necessary, either to give evidence or to produce a document or any other thing in any inquiry which such officer is making. Under Section 63 Subsection 1, a summon may be issued for a production of specified documents or other things, say, a contract or audit report, b, production of all documents or things of a particular description, say, financial statements, the condition is that such documents or things must be in the possession or control of the person to whom summon is being served. Can summons be issued orally? No, a summon issued to give evidence or produce documents shall be issued by the CGST slash SGST officer in writing only duly authorized by the competent authority. What are the obligations of a person who has been issued and served with a summon? The persons summoned are obligated to as follows. A. Attend to the summons. B. Attend in person or through an authorized representative, as the officer issuing summon may direct. He may direct to attend in person. C. State the truth upon any subject in respect of which they are examined. D. Make statements, recording of statement by officers. E. Produce documents or things as required. F. Seek exemption under Section 132 and 133 of Code of Civil Procedure regarding attendance. What can be consequences of non-appearance or not responding to summons? Since the summon proceedings are deemed to be judicial proceedings, if a person does not appear on the date when summoned without any reasonable justification, he can be prosecuted under Section 174 of the Indian Penal Code IPC. If he abscends to avoid service of summons, he can be prosecuted under Section 172 of the IPC and in case he does not produce the documents or electronic records required to be produced, he can be prosecuted under Section 175 of the IPC. Can there be monetary penalty for non-responding to summons? In terms of penal provisions, if a person does not appear before any officer who has issued the summon, he shall be liable to a monetary penalty up to Rs. 25,000.